Hello, in today's video we'll be replacing the rear brake pads and rotors on the Scion FRS. Same procedure as a Subaru BRZ and a Toyota 86. As you may notice, I decided to completely skip the removal of the wheel, which I hope if you watched any of my previous brake videos, you may not need this step. But this is where I lifted the vehicle and supported it with a jack stand. And our first step to doing this is to remove the caliper. And this caliper is held on my two bolts, which will need a 14mm socket to do so. Once you break them loose with the ratchet, you can remove the rest by hand. And there goes the first. And now for the second. And we can now just slide off the caliper. Followed by removing the brake pads. All you gotta do is slide them back and they should come off. In some cases they may be a little difficult to slide back, but you should be able to eventually free them up. Now we'll want to remove the brake caliper bracket, which will need the same 14mm socket to loosen and remove the two bolts holding it on. I'm using the socket with an adapter for the one half inch ratchet, which is longer to give me more leverage to break them loose. Once you get them both loose, just remove the rest by hand and the bracket will just slide off. You'll also want to hold up the bracket when you're removing the second bolt. And we can now compress the brake caliper using an old brake pad and a disc brake spreader. When doing this, you'll want to keep an eye on the brake master cylinder reservoir to make sure that the fluid is not going to overfill since it pushes it back into the reservoir. And now to remove the rotor. For this you'll want to use a bolt or two of an 8mm by 1.25 thread pitch and we'll want to thread them into the two threaded holes on the rotor. But before this you'll want to spray the center hub with WD-40 or some penetrating fluid to free it from the rust. Now just thread in the bolt and tighten it with the ratchet alternating back and forth. You'll also want to make sure that your parking brake is off, if not the rotor will not want to come off. After this the brake rotor should free up and you'll want to slide it back and off the parking brake assembly. Now you'll want to remove and replace the brake hardware that's on the bracket if your brake pads come with them. If not, you'll at least want to clean them from any dirt or gunk. So if you're going to reuse them, you'll want to use a brake cleaner and some gray scotch Bright or light sandpaper just to smooth them down so the brake pads can slide smoothly across. And now that you got them cleaned or if you're using new hardware, just slide them back on. And the removal of these pieces is just the reverse. Just slide them off the bracket. You'll now want to use brake lubricant to lubricate the two guide pins on the brake caliper bracket. You'll want to wipe and clean off the old lubricant and then add the clean new lubricant. I've already added it to this other pin, 
but you'll want to repeat on this one as well. The rotors I'll be installing are slotted and drilled, which is more of a performance rotor. Before installing a new rotor, you'll want to clean off both sides with brake cleaner to remove any rust protective coating they may have. Now we can flip it over and do the other side. Now to prepare the brake pads. For this step you'll want to use your old brake pads as reference for where to place the brake lubricant on the contact and slide points. You'll want to avoid getting any of this on the brake pad surface or the rotor, so you don't want to add too much lubricant. This is the vehicle's parking brake assembly. It's basically a drum brake assembly in the middle of the rotor, but only for parking brake purposes. These brakes do self-adjust as they wear, but in case you gotta adjust them in for the new rotor, you'll wanna rotate the star wheel back in, if necessary, but I didn't have to mess with it. You will wanna remove this plug from the old rotor though. This hole is just in case the parking brake is too tight to remove the rotor, you can remove this and adjust the star wheel, or you can also adjust the tightness of the parking brake afterwards. Now that the rotor is clean, we can place it on the hub. These drilled and slotted rotors are directional, so you'll want to place them correctly so they work at their best. You'll want these holes and cooling slots to be angled towards the back of the car. We're also now ready to install the brake caliper bracket plus the two bolts, getting them in by hand as much as you can before using the ratchet. and we can now tighten them and torque them to spec. And we can now go ahead and slide on the new brake pads. Paying attention to the lubrication. The one with the big center section lubricated goes against the caliper piston, while the other one goes against the caliper fingers. Followed by installing the brake caliper plus the two bolts. After getting them tight by hand, we can tighten them with the ratchet or torque wrench.
And with that the rear brake is now done. For the video on how I painted the caliper and the bracket, the video will be linked at the end of the video. The side I was working on was the rear passenger, and here's a look at the rear driver's side as well. And now all that's left is installing the wheel and lug nuts and torquing them to spec. And when you're done you also want to make sure that you pump your brake pedal a few times till it gets hard so that your caliper contacts your brakes before driving away. Now all that's left is torquing the wheel. You want to do this in a star pattern so that the wheel tightens evenly against the hub. Well that just about does it for this video. Hope you were able to find this video helpful and informative. If you did please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.